All right, so today I'm going to create a reserve server and teleport a group of players to that server and no one else can join, right? I'm going to do a private, I'm going to do a private server. And I have a group of two set in this game. I'll show you how to change the group size, but I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click that button. I'm going to get my alt to come over here and he clicks the button and now we're going to go, All right? Boom. So we're in our private world. I got my zombie. I'm gonna try and get him to. I'm gonna try and save my my alt, but for some reason he likes the alt more. There we go. I go back to my world. I'm gonna get in there to help my alt. I can't get in. Right. I'm locked out. Up oh, and he's back. We're both dead. So we could both do it again now, right? It'll be a new. It'll be a new instance of the server. We can't go in. Once we get teleported, that's it. It's locked. All right. So that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and code that up. All right, so I'm going to go here to this fresh world. I made this fresh world. It says reserve server YouTube, reserve server YouTube. Nothing's in it. And I'm going to add a little wall. Let's put a part. And that's going to hold my button so I can, I can teleport. I'm going to call that map select. Uh, I'll call that map wall, map wall. And then... Let's put a surface GUI on there. There we go, surface GUI. On the surface GUI, I'm gonna put a text label. And I don't see the text label. That means it's on some other side. So on the surface GUI, I'm gonna to go to face and I'm gonna select something else and hope it pops up. So it's not on the left. Maybe it's on the right. It is on the right, there we go. So. Let's make the, let's make the uh, text label bigger. Go to size. For X, I'm gonna make it 100% of the parent object. So one and zero, zero is the pixel offset. For Y, I'm gonna do 0.2, which is 20% of the parent object, zero pixel offset. Cool. Let's make that banger font, bangers. Change the message, uh, click, button to join Q. That's tiny, so let's hit text scale. Good. Let's add a button, right? There we go. This is gonna be our button. Let's call it button. Let's change the size. I see the size right here, so I'll change that now. 0.2, 2, and 2. And we wanna anchor it so it doesn't fall down. Now let's change the color to green so we can see it on the gray wall. There we go. Click button to join the queue. Cool. And then on the button, we're gonna add a click detector. We're gonna need that. So I have the button, I'm gonna select the map. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna group. I'm gonna call that the map selector. Map selector. And we only have one map, right? All right, on map selector model, I'm going to add a script. I'm going to call it the script uh, teleporter or teleport, something like that. As long as it makes sense. Teleport. And we're going to need a few variables. Let's get our clicker. So script.parent.button.clicker. Click detector, sorry. So script parent is the map selector. Then we go down the levels of the button and then there's the click detector. So that's how we got that variable right there. All right, now I need another variable for the number of people who are currently in the queue. So I'm gonna call that number of players. We're gonna set that to zero. Then we need a required amount of players. I'm gonna call that required players. I'm gonna set that this to one because it's gonna be easier to test it. And you can set that to five or whatever you want. That's that's where you set how many people are going to be teleported at once, All right? So then we'll say local player queue, and this is going to be the table that holds all the players that are going to get teleported. And then I need whoops local teleportation service game get service teleport service. There we go. And I need to make a function, local function called join queue. Join queue. Whoops, I forgot my E. 
player. Cool. And then let's connect that to the, let's get the clicker and connect that to the join queue so we don't forget. So there's our clicker. We have a mouse click, connect, join queue. So when somebody clicks that, that button with a click detector on there, this is going to fire an event. It's going to uh, fire that function. It's going to call that function. The player who clicked the button is going to be sent in. And then we will increase our number of players plus equals one. So that's going to add a one to the number of players with that plus equals modifier or uh, operator. We'll get our player queue. We'll use the number of players as the index in the table. And then we'll add the player. Right. So there we go. When we join queue, we're going to go into this table, right? We're going to have our player pass into that table. This is going to increment. We're going to know how many players are in the game. But what happens if the same player clicks the button over and over again? That's not going to be any good. We got to, we got to check for that. So we're going to say local function. I'm going to say has player. And then I'm going to pass in the table and the player. And I'm just going to check my table to see if he's not in there before I add him. So I'll do a if statement or a for loop. I mean, a for i and v in pairs. There's pairs. So we're going to go through the table. This is the index, right? One, two, three, four, five. We start at one. These are the players that are already in the table. So if we find a player that's already in the table, we're going to return true. Ooh, it has a player. Right? Um, no, wait. We have to do an if statement for that. Sorry. If V equals equals player, then return true. Right there. That makes more sense. And then if we get to the bottom and say, whoops, no player we can add. Perfect. That's right, right? Yeah, so we go through. Uh, we found a player. Yup, has a player. If we get all the way to the bottom, it's fine. We can join the queue. Our player was not in the queue. I know that's a little tricky. Even I had to think about that for a second. So now I'm going to say if not has player, we're going to have our player queue and the player that wants to join that queue, then, then we can add. Otherwise, don't. Otherwise, just skip right out of that function. Cool. Let me get rid of that white space. All right. So uh, should we do a print statement here? Let's do a print statement. Print player has joined the queue in case we have to troubleshoot in case we get something wrong a lot can happen in this all right now we need another function to monitor the queue and we get enough players we can teleport all right i'm gonna move that up a little bit so i'll say local function queue loop that's going to monitor my queue to see if there's enough people to teleport i'll say while wait one second do so i'm going to introduce a one second wait in every iteration of the while loop i'll say if number of players is greater than or equal to required players then then let's go ahead and print uh prepare to teleport prepare to teleport you'll only see that in the console there you're not going to see it uh, in your game but It'll be good if we have a problem. Now, this is the important part. We want to reserve a, uh, a private server. So I'm going to say local code. I need to get a code for that. TS, teleportation service, reserve server. Ah, we need an ID for where we want to go. Let's go over here. So you have to have this world selected. Currently, the world has to be selected to get the asset manager. Otherwise, it'll, otherwise it'll be grayed out. Uh, I think that's a bug. I think they'll fix that. Add new place. There we go. That's where we're going to go. I'm not going to decorate it. Um, I'm just going to right click. I'm going to get the ID. Go back to my teleport. Uh, I'll get rid of that because it takes up a lot of space. And I'll paste. Oh, did I mess up? Oh, control V. There we go. I'll paste the ID into that reserve server method. Then we're going to get a code. Only people with that code are going to be able to teleport. And since this is local to that if statement, when we get out of the if statement, it goes away forever. So only the people who are in the queue are going to be able to go. We'll say teleportation service, teleport to private server. We need our ID, we need our code, and we need the players who want to go. 
right? Now, let's say number of players equals zero because we're going to clear out our queue. They're gone. Everybody's out in the other world. We'll say player queue is now empty. Whoops. If other people want to join, they're going to join a, a whole new server. They're going to get a new code. They're going to join a new server. They're not going to interrupt our game for our original people that went there. Cool. All right. Did we miss anything? Yes. We have to call this, right? It's not going to run by itself. So I'm going to spawn this in its own thread, right? If you call this, it's going to tie up this, this function is going to tie up the whole script because it's never going to end. So you'd have to put it down here, which wouldn't be a problem, but I'm just going to spawn it in its own thread. So it'll run. So that's essentially it. Uh, that should work. Did I miss anything? Probably there's a lot here. All right. No, I think we're good. Let's go ahead and save this. Publish to Roblox. So required players for our queue is only one. That's going to be easy. Let's go to our other world. Oops, that's not our other world. Let's go to our other world right here under the asset manager. And I'm going to write a script to come back when we die. Because I thought that would be kind of cool. And here we go. Here's our other world. So you'll notice the places of the, we have both places. Um, we're in the Simtech Gamer 7's place number 124. All right. I want to go to the back of the lobby. So I'm going to copy that ID. All right. It's going to be easier to go back. I'm going to go to server script service. Script. And I'll say return to lobby or something like that. Return to lobby. Let me get rid of this. Let me make that a little bigger. We need our teleportation service, local game, get service. And that's what teleport service. I always call it teleportation. I mean, teleport service. And then we'll do this uh, local function, add player to game. And then every time we come into the game, we get teleported into the game, even if it is in mass, every player is going to fire this function. If we do game players player added then we'll connect that to add player to game then when we come in here we can get our player get the character event so we'll say the character added event so we'll say character added connect whoops i hit cat's block sorry uh function the character will be passed into this anonymous function and then i want to get my humanoid We'll do a char wait for child humanoid. So this is the character right here. I just called it char. This character is hard to spell. Look at my humanoid and we have a died event on the humanoid. We'll connect that to another anonymous function. There's no name on it. And that one will be the teleport service. We'll just do a basic teleport. Control V, that was that number that was over here, right? Uh, asset manager. Oh my gosh, there we go. Asset manager. We right clicked, copy that ID. That's what I put right in here. And you need the player. So they're going to go back to the lobby one by one. So we're not reserving the lobby or anything, right? The lobby, they can just plop them back in there. All right, that's cool. Let's go ahead and save all this and test it out. Publish to Roblox. And make sure publish to Roblox. I think I already got it. Cool. Let's look for it. We can't test it in studio. You can't do teleporting in a studio. Here it is. Reserve server YouTube. Let's hit that. Let's hit our little green button. And we're starting up. Reserve server YouTube. And, oh, good. Our button didn't fall down. We remember to anchor it. Let's bring up our, hit F9. So we could see our server messages. There are none. I don't think I put any to join the queue, right? Boom. But prepare to teleport. Oh yeah, I did put one to join the queue. Yay, I'm here. So now can I go back? Oops, yeah, reset, reset character because I have no way to die, right? I, can, I don't want to run all the way to the end. Ah, oh, boom. I simulated a die event. And yeah, we're back to the lobby. Cool. Now this doesn't get the test to see if it was locked out, but you could see that it was locked out on my demo video. I used the same script. 
So good luck with that. That is a little bit tricky. There wasn't a lot of code, but there's a lot that can go wrong. So take your time, watch the video. If you have problems with it, watch it again. You might have missed something. I did this, I practiced this video many times so I wouldn't make any mistakes. And I still made mistakes, but just tiny ones. All right, so good luck and we'll see you next time.